Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first project in the MySQL series. Today, we're going to be focusing on data cleaning. Now, if you don't know what data cleaning is, it's basically where you get it in a more usable format. So you fix a lot of the issues in the raw data so that when you start creating visualizations or start using it in your products, that the data is actually useful and there aren't a lot of issues with it. So that's really what data cleaning is. Now, what we're about to do is create a database. We're going to import a data set. This is a real data set. And what we're going to do is we're going to clean the data. So I'm going to show you and walk you through all the steps in order to clean the data. The data set that we're going to be working with will be in the GitHub. So you can just go and download that. I'll have a link somewhere in the description, but let's get started. First thing we're going to do is create a new database. So we'll go right over here to create a new schema. And we're just going to call this one. We'll do this is world underscore layoffs. So if you can't tell already, uh, we're going to do world layoffs. Uh, that's the data set that we're going to be doing. We'll just click apply. And that creates our world layoffs right here. Now we're going to go into here. There are no tables. We're going to right click on tables and go to table data import wizard. Now we haven't done this yet uh, in this series. We haven't imported any data, but that's what we're doing here. We're going to show you how to import data. So we'll go ahead and click browse. And as you can see right here, we have this layoffs data set. Let's open this up. And we're going to click next. And we're going to create a new table. There's no existing table in this database. You can drop it if it exists. Uh, if you'd like to, it doesn't matter. This is new. We're going to go ahead and select next. Now, right here is where you configure import settings. Now, MySQL is going to automatically assign a data type based off of the data in these columns. So we'll take a look at the data later. Now, there is one thing that you can take a look at real quick. We have this date column. Now, in here, it assigned it as a text. That's because of the format. We are going to import this as the raw data. We're not going to try to change anything in the import settings. We're just going to assume this is how the data was in the table. So I'm not going to change anything, although this may be something that you would want to change to something like a date time and go and fix that. But we're going to import this as the raw data. Let's go ahead and select next. We're going to import it. We just select next. Now, this could take a little bit. Uh, so while this is importing, I'm just going to skip ahead. This should take just a few minutes to import. All right, this just finished. Let's select next. And we imported 2,361 records. Let's go ahead and select finish. We can get rid of this. And let's refresh this. Perfect. We have our layoffs table. So we'll select everything. And I'm going to go and double click on the world layoffs because I don't want to write out the whole thing every time. So we're going to say from layoffs. And let's see what we get. So let's take a look at the data that we're going to be working with in this data cleaning project. So this data set is layoffs from around the world starting, I think, 2021. And we'll take a look at that in this date column later. But it has the company. So it has the company that did the layoffs. It has the location of where they are, what industry they are part of, how many they laid off, the percentage that they laid off. So the percentage of their company, the date the stage, which refers to the stage that the company is in, whether it's a series B post IPO, uh, they don't know. Then there's the country and then we have funds raised millions. So we have a lot of information here. And in the next project, we're going to be doing exploratory data analysis. So we're cleaning all of this data. And then in the next lesson, we're going to actually dive into it and try to find trends and patterns and all these other things. So what we are going to do is we're going to go through multiple steps. Step number one is we are going to try to remove duplicates if there are any. That is the first thing I typically do, especially if I know this data shouldn't have any duplicates or it'd be you know repetitive or unnecessary to have duplicates. The second thing is going to be to standardize the data. That just means that if there are issues with the data with spellings or things like that, we just want to standardize it to where it's all the same as it should be. Number three is we'll look at the null values or blank values. And there's a lot of null values in here. There's even a blank value right here. And we're going to see if we can populate that if we can. And there are times where you should. There are times where you shouldn't. I'll kind of walk through that as well. And lastly, we want to remove any columns and rows that aren't necessary. And there's a few different ways to do that. Uh, this one is a little bit, you know, um, let me write this actually real quick remove any columns. So I'm just going to say there are instances where you can do this. There are instances where you shouldn't do this when you're working with massive data sets and you have a column that's, you know, completely irrelevant, completely blank. You don't have any ETL process that uh, is required for it. 
um, you can get rid of it and it can save you time when you're querying your data. Now, with that being said, uh, and we'll talk about this later, in the real workplace, oftentimes you have processes that automatically import data from different data sources. If you remove a column from the raw data set, that's a big, big problem. So what we're going to do is something I would actually do in my real work, which is I would create some type of staging or raw data set. Let's say this one's our raw one. And we could have even called this layoffs underscore raw. We're going to create another one. We're going to create a table. So we'll say create table. And let's call this one layoffs underscore staging. And we literally just want to copy all of the data from the raw table into the staging table. So we can do that really quickly by just saying like layoffs. And if we run this and we refresh, you'll see we have this staging database. And let's copy this. There we go. And we'll do layoffs underscore staging. And so now we have all of the columns and all we have to do is insert the data. So we're just going to say insert, then we're going to say layoffs staging, go right here, and we'll select everything from layoffs. And let's run this. And if we select the table, we now have all the data over. So super, super easy. And now we have these two different tables. Now, again, why do we do this? Is because we're about to change the staging database a lot. If we make some type of mistake, we want to have the raw data available. This does happen. This is something that you do in the real workplace because you're not going to work on the raw data. It just, you shouldn't do it. It's not best practice. So I'm going to show you what I would actually do in my, you know, like a real job. So that's what we're going to do. Now we're only going to be working off the staging database and we can copy this and make different databases for different things. Um, as long as we have our raw data, we can really do anything we want going forward. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. So the number one thing we're going to look at is to make sure that we are removing duplicates. We want to make sure we don't have any duplicate data in here. And if so, we're going to get rid of it. Now, really quickly, if you did my Microsoft SQL Server project, we did something very similar, but we had an extra column over here that gave the unique row ID, which made it really easy to remove the duplicates. Here, there is no identifying factor that's going to be easy for that. So I'm just going to tell you up front, removing these duplicates is not going to be easy, but we'll walk through it every step of the way. So what we can do is try and do something like a row number, and we'll match it against all of these columns, and then we'll see if there are any duplicates. Now, I'm just, we're starting off strong, okay? We're jumping into kind of some of the more advanced things. It does get actually easier as we go, but this is the actual order that I follow, so uh, I'm gonna keep it. So let's try to identify duplicates. So let's copy this. Let's pull this down, do underscore staging. There we go. Now, what we can do is we can do row number, and we'll do that partition by basically, we could do every single one of these columns. That's kind of what we're doing. So what we can do is we can say everything. Then we can do a comma and we'll say row underscore number. And it would be just like this. And we're going to do this over. And we want to partition by all of these columns. Essentially, we could just do a few for now to see if we get any hits and then we can look at that. But there are going to be multiple companies that have layoffs in the same location and industry although their total laid off would probably be different. The date would probably be different. So if we do something like uh, company, let's do industry, we will do total underscore laid underscore off, comma, percentage laid off, and then let's do date. Now I'm doing date with the back ticks because date is a keyword in MySQL. So if we do it like this, it just really makes it easy. So we're going to partition by all of these things. So let's do partition by and let's bring this down real quick. So I'm just going to say over partition by and we're going to call this as row underscore num. Now let's try running this. Let's see if it works really quickly. It's important. And over here, you can see that we have our row number. Now these mostly are unique. And these all look unique. I'm not going to scroll through all of them, but we want to be able to filter on this so we can filter where the row number is greater than two. If it has two or above, that means there's duplicates. That means there's an issue. So let's go ahead and we're going to take this. We'll put it into either a uh, subquery or a CTE. 
I'll create a CTE for this because uh, it's really easy. So we'll say for or not for we'll say with and then we'll do uh, duplicate underscore CTE as then we'll just do our parentheses. We'll paste this in here and get rid of that right there. And now we're going to say select everything from this duplicate CTE. And then we'll say where row underscore num is greater than one. Now let's run this and let's add a semicolon. Let's run this. And you can see that these ones have duplicates. So these are our duplicates actually. And we want to get rid of these exact rows. Now, just to confirm that these are uh, the duplicates, let's look at this one. I've never heard of this company, um, but we'll take it really quick. And let's select. We'll say where company is equal to, and we'll call this Oda. So let's run this. And it looks like these, no, 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 these aren't duplicates. That's a good thing we checked, okay? Because it looks like um, these aren't the exact same. Although they're very, very close, these technically are not duplicates. So I'm glad we checked this. We need to do this partition by over every single column. That's what I'm realizing. So we'll do company, comma, location. I'm glad, I'm genuinely glad we're, you know, it's good to make mistakes um, and figure things out as you go. It really is important. So company, location, industry, total laid off, percentage laid off, date. Then we'll do stage and then we'll do country and then funds underscore raised underscore millions. So we're changing the CTE to partition over everything. So now let's run this. Okay, Oda is not in there. That's the only one we checked. Um, but let's look at Casper. I know this is these are the um, aren't these the mattress people? I know they had layoffs, poor guys. Um, all right, let's take a look. It looks like this row and this row are duplicates. These are our duplicates. So we are gonna want to remove only one of those. We don't wanna re remove all of those. So um, just looking at this one example, it looks like this uh, query is working well. So here's our duplicates. Now, we need to identify these exact rows. We don't wanna delete both of them. When we looked at Casper, there's the real one that we want to keep. Then there's a duplicate that we want to remove. We don't want to remove both. That would be bad. Now, in MySQL, it's a little bit trickier to remove things than it is in something like Microsoft SQL Server, PostgreSQL. Um, they have different ways that they can delete rows. For example, in Microsoft SQL Server, we could literally identify these row numbers in the CTE and delete them from it, and it would delete it from the actual table. We can't do that in MySQL. And I'll show you. Uh, let's actually copy this. Do, do we'll go like this and we'll say uh, let's say we want to delete these we'll say delete from so we're deleting this from where the row number is uh, greater than one what am I writing right here delete there we go so delete from this duplicate CTE where the row number is greater than one that's all these duplicates we want to remove them let's try to do this let's run it let's go down if we look at the bottom, it says the target table duplicate CTE of the delete is not updatable. So you cannot update a CTE. A delete statement is like an update statement, um, essentially. So what we are going to do is we're going to do something a little bit different because this is how I would love to do it. That makes it super, super easy to remove duplicates. But that is not always the way that things happen in the real world. I think what we should do is take this right here and let's run this. We should take this right here and put this into, let's say, a staging two database, and then we can delete it because we can filter on these row nums and we can delete those which are equal to two. So it's essentially like, you know, creating some type of table and then uh, just deleting the actual column. So we're that's exactly what we're going to do. So it's essentially just creating another table that has this extra row and then deleting it where that row is equal to two. So you know, somewhat fairly straightforward, but um, let's try it and let's see what happens. So what we're gonna come down here and do is create our table. Uh, let's try doing that with here. Let's, uh, let's copy to clipboard a create statement. Let's see if this works. Perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. Now, all we're going to do is say, we're creating the table layoff staging two. Now this is a create table statement and we're, naming the columns, and then we're also assigning the data type. So 
we have all these things, but we want one more. I'm gonna do a comma and we wanna add row underscore num and I need to underscore num. And that should be an integer data type. So we'll just keep it just like this. Let's go ahead and copy this and let's run it. See if it worked, bring this up. Looks like it worked properly. Uh, and let's say, let's go back up. I wanna rewrite things that I don't have to. Let's run this. So we, now we have this empty table. So we wanna insert this information right here. So we're gonna insert into, so we'll insert into, and then we'll do this right here. So insert into staging two. Now let's try to run this, see if it works. And let's run it. And let's select that table. And now we have it. So let's pull this back up and I'll walk through what we just did because I know I'm going quick, but we have so much to cover um, in this lesson. So we just inserted basically a copy of all these columns, but in this new table, we added one more, the row num. So now we can filter and we can say where, when you spell that right, where row underscore num is equal to two, or we should, should say greater than one because some might have multiple duplicates. And there you go, here are our duplicates. Now we're going to delete these. So all we have to do is come right back down, where'd I go? Copy this, come right back down here, and we're just gonna say delete from. We just did a select statement, I always recommend doing that to identify what you're deleting. Then you change it to delete, and now if we run this, go, and I'm actually gonna keep this. Um, let me see, there we go. And let's run it again. And now they're gone. And if we say um, just the whole table, this looks wonderful. Now this row num is gonna be a column at the end that we probably don't need anymore, right? It's a redundant column. It adds up extra space and memory and storage and all these other things and processing times. So we're just gonna get rid of it. Uh, that'll be at the very end, I'm sure. So it looks like we are good to go. That's how we remove duplicates. Now. Um, <clears throat> there are different ways to do it when you have different columns. Like if you have a unique column over here, it makes it so much easier. So, so, so much easier. But we didn't have that, so we had to kind of do a workaround. Uh, welcome to the real world. Now, let's look at standardizing data. So standardizing data is finding issues in your data and then fixing it. So I'm already noticing right here, it looks like we have a space at the beginning. Uh, we could easily just do a trim on this column. Um, and let's, I'm, I don't even think I was, um, I did this when I wrote out all the, the, the scripts for this. Let's just do from this table, why am I writing it all out again? We actually want to select the company and then the, or actually we'll just do distinct company. Distinct company. Let's run this. And if we do a trim, around this, let's run this again, and that looks better. So if we do uh, company, company, comma, and then we'll just do the trim, I don't wanna, um, we don't need to do distinct right now. We'll do the company, this just looks better, so we're gonna update that, uh, it's super easy. Now, if you ran into an issue just a second ago, uh, I may need to help you change that. So if you couldn't update or delete those things earlier, I should have told you this earlier, I apologize. All you need to go is to edit. You just need to go to edit, go to preferences at the very bottom, go to SQL editor, go all the way down to the bottom. And right here we have safe updates on. If you have this selected, that means you can't update anything. That's a problem. So what you need to do is select this uh, or unselect it like I have it and save it. You may have to even restart your MySQL potentially uh, in order for those changes to take effect, but then you should be able to update that. Now all we're gonna do is update this table and we're going to set, and now we need to come back here and we'll say we're gonna set the company equal to trim. Now, if you don't know what trim is or you haven't taken that lesson, trim just takes off the white space off the end. So it took the white space out of here or off the right hand side as well. So we're gonna update this and let's do a semicolon, a semicolon, let's run this. Let's select this again, and it was updated properly. So we're already off to a great start. Now, the next thing that I wanna take a look at is the actual industry. So let's go back 
copy this. And let's take a look at the industry. So we'll do industry and we'll run it. Now, if you look in here, there's a ton of different industries um, and there's marketing and marketing. Oh, because I haven't done distinct. <laughs> uh, please ignore me. Let's do distinct. And there's a ton of different industries in here. Transportation, healthcare, consumer. Uh, there's a blank one, which we'll take a look at. Aerospace. There's a lot of really unique ones. Let's actually order this. We'll do order by uh, and let's just do one, which is the first column. We're just ordering our own self. So we have null, we have blank. That's a problem. We'll take a look at that later. Uh, but this is an issue. Crypto, cryptocurrency, and cryptocurrency. These are all the same thing. These should all be uh, on or labeled the exact same thing. The reason we need to change this is because when we start doing uh, the exploratory data analysis, visualizing it, these would all be their own rows, their own unique thing which we don't want. We want them all to be grouped together so we can accurately look at the data. Let's take a look at any other ones. FinTech and finance, that could be the same thing. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not a FinTech person. Um, I think for now, the only one that I'm confident in changing is this one right here, which is cryptocurrency. So let's go ahead and update that. So all we have to do, and we need to Actually, let's select really quickly where it's like crypto. So we'll say uh, where industry, and we want to select everything. Where the industry is like, and we'll just do crypto. Because they all start with crypto, right? Yeah. So we'll do crypto just like this, and let's run this. And let's just take a look. Lot of layoffs in the crypto industry. Good night. All right, let's find where it's cryptocurrency. Okay, so even this one, it's crypto, and I know Gemini crypto, crypto, and then it says cryptocurrency. So these should be all crypto. You see how 95% of them are crypto? So we're going to update these other ones. Oh, this one is C R Y P T. Is that how you spell crypto? Jeez, I don't know anything. All right, so we want to update all of them to be crypto. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, update layoffs industry two we want to set the industry equal to crypto just like this where and we can do it a few different ways we can say industry and we can, i think we can do like let's try this real quick i i some of this stuff i don't have planned out i'm just kind of going with it as we go um which i like better you know we kind of we work together on this we figure these things out together that's what i like um, then we'll do like crypto, just like this, exactly like we had it up here. So if it's like crypto, it should be crypto. Let's try this. Let's see if it ran, because it may not have, I can't remember. Yeah, it worked. Okay, so it updated uh, three rows, and that looks correct. Now let's go back up, and let's run this. And as we scroll down, they are all the exact same. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So if we do... Uh, distinct industry again. Let's get rid of this. If we run this query and we scroll down, crypto is its own thing. Beautiful. And it looks great. We can look at those later on how we can update those. Um, but let's keep going. Let's look at our whole table again. And these blanks and these nulls are actually an issue. We do need to deal with them. But I, I my instinct is telling me go fix it. Um, but my, you know, tutorial side is saying, okay, stick with, uh, the tutorial, the order that we agreed on. Um, so let's go take a look. So we've looked at company. We've looked at industry. Um, let's just real quick look at, uh, distinct, uh, location. Now it's good to look at most of these things, right? There could be small, tiny issues that you just never saw. Um, and we're just going to order by order by one. Just do a real quick, just a scan to see if we find any issues. Um, that could be an issue, but that could just be another language, if I'm being honest. I don't know. I'm just, as I'm just scrolling through here because I want to make sure, because this is not something I had in my uh, pre-written script. This looks pretty good to me. Um, let's do everything. We'll run this. And now let's look at country. So we'll do distinct country. And let's run this. And let's scroll down. 
Again, this is sometimes just what I actually do. All right, we got an issue right here. Super common, somebody put a period at the end, some dingus, uh, and we're not gonna judge that person. I don't know who it was or who ruined this data set, but um, yeah, that's a problem. So we're gonna need to just update that. It looks pretty simple, um, but I'll just say where country is equal to, or let's say like, and then I'll say like United States. There we go. And oops, I wanna say select everything. I just wanna see um, where it's at. Oh geez, there's too many. Let me see if I can spot it. I can't spot it. It looks like they're supposed to be United States, not United States dot. That's the issue. Um, we can easily, easily fix this. And we can probably, let's do um, really quickly. Let's do select, oops, select distinct. And then we'll do country, comma, and then we'll do a trim. Because we want to get rid of that, um, that one. We'll do country. Now, just doing the trim won't fix it. Let's go to the bottom. So that doing the trim doesn't fix it. But here's what you can do. It's a little trick of the trade here. We're going to do something called trailing, which means coming at the end. So what's trailing? The period from country. Let's try running this. Scroll to the bottom. And it fixed it. So this is a little, um, a little advanced little tidbit for the trim here. We can do trailing from the country. And um, we're looking for something that's not a white space. We're specifying we're looking for a period. So now what we can do is we can say update. We can set the country, we'll do update um, this table. And we'll, oops. And we'll set, what am I doing? What's going on here? We'll set the country equal to, and we'll do it just like this, but we're only gonna do it for a country, right? Uh, so we'll say is equal to trim, and we'll say where country is equal to, or actually let's say like, and let me see if I have this, oh, I don't. Let's, let's just say like United States, like we had it before, just like this. So let's go ahead and update this after I put my semicolon in, let's run this. And let's run this again. And it shouldn't need to fix it anymore. It's just one row. That's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Now, one thing that's really important, uh, and this is, you know, this is a longitudinal, it's not the right word at all. Give me a second. I can't, I can't speak and write at the same time. So sometimes I just say uh, dumb things. Um, <laughs> uh, if we want to do not longitudinal, but um, time series, that's the word I'm looking for. If we're trying to do time series, um, exploratory data analysis, time series visualizations later on, this needs to be changed. Right now it's text and we can look at that by going right, actually, let's refresh this. Now we're not looking at staging, we're looking at staging two. If we look at the columns and we come down here to date, it is a text column. That's not good if we're trying to do a uh, time series stuff. We wanna change this to a date column. Now, how can we do that? Let's take a look. So let's do date, and let's not actually do it like that. Let's do date backslash. So we're just gonna look at the date. Now, let's change this, because we wanna format it how we wanna format it, with it, which is month, day, year. So how can we do this? Well, there's something that's very, very helpful, works perfectly in this situation, and is exactly what we're gonna do. It's called string to date. So we're gonna do string, underscore, there it is right there, underscore to, underscore date. It literally helps us go from a string, which is a text, that's the data type, to a date, so it's perfect. Now, all we need to do is pass through two parameters. We have to pass through the column, which is the date column, and then what format we want it in. Now, if you haven't done date formats before, I'm gonna just kind of walk you through it while we're looking at it. Um, in order to format this properly, you use a percent sign. So it's gonna be a formatting for a month, a lowercase m. A capital M is something completely different. I believe it's spelled out. I need to, I, we can look at that in a second if we want to actually. And then we can do this right here, and then we'll do another one. So we're formatting it in the way that we want it, but also converting it to an actual uh, date column. So now we want month, and then we want day, lowercase day. We'll do a forward slash, and then another percent sign, and then a capital Y, which stands for, I believe, the four, um, four number long year. Uh, I have a, let's just, um, let's look at this real quick. 
So it worked perfect. So we're it's taking in this format that it's in right over here and converting it into the date format. So this is the standard date format that you're going to find in MySQL. Now let's see what happens really quickly just for fun. Uh, let's see if we do capital M. Uh, it looks like that's not going to work at all. Uh, let's do lowercase y and um, just formatted it to 2020. I think it took the first two numbers, it looks like. I don't know why it's doing that, if I'm being honest. Um, but if we keep it with the capital Y as we should, this looks perfect. This looks exactly like what we're trying to do. So you can mess around with it. It depends on the how the data is formatted in your original column when it converts it to the string to date. And there's a lot of different stuff. You should just look up um, date formatting in MySQL. Really interesting stuff. So we're going to update this date column to this, which is our new date column. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say update. You guys should be getting used to this by now. That's the whole point is getting used to doing these things. So we're going to set date equal to, and then we're going to put in this right here, the string to date. Go ahead and do this. And let's run it. Make sure it worked. 2,355 rows. It looked like it did every single one, uh, but let's go ahead and get rid of this. And let's run it. And it looks like it worked perfectly. Now there were some nulls, it looks like, and that'll be something we have to look at later when we talk about nulls, but um, overall, I believe this looks proper. Now, if we refresh this, let's refresh, let's come down to the date, you'll notice it is still a text. It's date, it's called text, but now it's in the date format. Now that's really important, and maybe I should have done that earlier, if I'm being honest. Um, tried to convert it to a date column, it wouldn't work. It would give us an error. Um, you just have to trust me on that one. But now we can do it where we can change it to a date column. So let's do alter table. Now only do this, never ever do this on your raw table, only do this on things like a staging table because we're about to completely change the data type of the actual table. So we wanna change the layoff staging to, and then we're gonna come down here, and we're gonna say modify column. Now what column are we modifying? It's this date column. There we go. And we wanna change it to what data type? A date. And am I spelling this right? Yeah, I just need a semicolon here. Whenever I see an error, I always get a, just look for the semicolons. So let's go and run this. And let's refresh, see if it worked. And the date was changed to a date, which is perfect. It's all we wanted to do uh, just to make sure we were doing what, uh, or we'll set ourselves up later in the future really well. Let's look at our table. All right, this is very good. So we fixed a few uh, just issues with the company. I believe something with the industry, oh, the cryptocurrency. We changed the country. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now, this one uh, we're not going to look at until we look at the um, nulls and whatnot in just a second. So we're not looking at that one yet. And then uh, we have this extra column that we've done. So we've done a lot so far, but the next thing in the process, step one was remove duplicates, step two was standardization, step three is working with null and blank values. Now this is going to happen. You're going to have nulls and you're going to have uh, blank values in here. I, it's somewhere. Um, it's just going to happen. And so we need to think about what we're going to do with that information, whether we want to make them all nulls, make them all blanks, try to populate that data. Let's see what we're going to do. So let's start off with the total laid off. We'll just do uh, where total underscore laid underscore off is null. So in order to look at the null, we say is null. Let's try equal to null. It's not going to give it to us. We have to say where it is null. So we have these values. These are completely null. Uh, and there's quite a few of them. But remember, this is also useful information. But if they have two nulls, uh, that probably is pretty useless to us. Um, that's something I think we'll take a look at in a little bit, actually. We'll say, and we, and we may save this query, percentage uh, laid off is null. So if they're both null, like these, these are all, I believe, fairly useless to us. These might be ones that we remove. So let's actually look at this um, in step four, we look at removing rows and columns. 
But one thing we should take a look at, I remember this industry, let's do uh, industry, do distinct. This industry had some missing values. And let's take a look at that. Okay, so we have a missing value and we have a null here. So let's look at this query and let's say where uh, industry is null or do industry is equal to a blank like this. We'll select everything to run this. All right. So it looks like there are a few that are blank. Now, what we can try to do is see if any of these have one that's populated. Let's take Airbnb, for example. Let's search for this really quickly. And this is 100%, um, you know, it's just helpful. It's really, really helpful to be able to populate data that is pop populatable. Is that a word? Um, let's try it. So we'll say uh, select everything. I just want to do where, spell that right, where company is equal to, and let's do Airbnb. There we go. Let's run this. And it looks like we have this one right here. So for example, um, these, whether they have them or not, we're gonna try to populate these. If this Bally's or Carvana or Jewel had multiple layoffs, these ones should, if these ones aren't blank, if they have one that's not blank, we should be able to populate it. For example, um, not the one I was trying to do. If we look at Airbnb, this one has travel. So we know this is the travel industry. So we can populate this with travel again, we want this data to be uh, uh, the same. So if we're trying to look at, you know, what industries were impacted the most, this row isn't gonna be affected or this row won't be in our output because it's blank. We want that to be travel to represent the data properly. So we wanna update it. So if this one has travel, we should be able to update this row with this travel right here. So let's see how we can write this. And let me give myself some rows right here. All right. Now, what we're going to need to do is try to do a join here. So let's try writing it out in a select statement, and then we'll just change it to an update if it works. So we're going to select everything, and we're going to do this from staging two, from staging two, and we'll call this uh, ST2. And then we'll join on itself, because what we're going to do is we're going to check in this table, does it have one that is blank and not blank? If so, update it with the non-blank one. That's essentially uh, in layman terms what we're trying to write, but writing it out could be a little bit more difficult. Um, so we're gonna join on itself, and we'll call this, uh, let's actually call this table one, T1 and T2, because they're the exact same table. Uh, and we'll do this on, and we're gonna say T1.company is equal to T2.company. So the company has to be the same, that's important. And we probably should do the location is the same as well. Now we'll do and t1.location is equal to t2.location. I'm imagining, you know, there's another Airbnb in like South America somewhere that's called Airbnb. But, you know, I'm just imagining a scenario, right? Where we have to think about different use cases rather than just large companies. So those other ones, they may have ones that are in different locations. We don't want those. Um, we don't wanna change them if they're not the same. So these are the same. Now what we wanna find is we're gonna say, oops, we wanna say where, and then we'll do t1.industry is null. And then we wanna check that t2.industry is not null. We'll say and t2.industry is not null. And let's just run this. Let's see if we get anything. So let's think this through because we got nothing in our output. We're selecting everything. We're joining on the company and the company um, and the location where T1 industry is null and T2 ind industry is not null. Let's just get rid of this for a second. I just want to see if this changes anything. It doesn't. And it's possible actually that instead of doing is null, we could do or, and this, I'm glad we're walking through this. We can do or is equal to blank. And let's try running this. There we go. Okay, so it looks like there's Jewel, Carvana, and Airbnb. These ones all have industries um, where it's null or blank, 
and an industry is not null. So that's really good. Now, if we scroll over, see the industry here, this is our T1, this is our first table. If we scroll over, I bet we'll see the T2 industry where it's not null. Let's scroll over and here's our industry. We have travel, transportation, and consumer. So this worked exactly as we had hoped. I can even um, pull this up here just to show, kind of show you a little bit easier what that's doing. And we'll do T2 dot industry. This is kind of like what we're trying to do. So if it's blank, this one is going to be populated into here if there is one that is not blank. So that's essentially what we're going to do. Now let's write the update statement and we're going to see if it works. This we have to translate this to an update statement. So we'll do update and we're going to update uh, this right here. So we'll say update T1 and then we'll do the join right there. And now we have to do a set statement. So we'll set uh, the T1 dot industry equal to and I'll just copy this T2 dot industry. I just don't like I don't like writing things out. Um, then we say where. So we do this. Just like that. And let's add a semicolon. Okay, let's confirm. So we're updating this table T1. We're joining on T2 where the company is the exact same. We're setting T1 industry equal to T2 industry. So the T1 should be the blank one. So where the T1 industry is null or blank and T2 industry is not null. Let's go ahead and run this semicolon. See if there were about three updated. Yep. Rematch zero rows affected though. Let's go take a look. Um, we have to let's run this query. Looks like those are still null. Let's run this. Uh, that one is still blank. Now let me think here. I'm, I'm trying to think of why this didn't work. Uh, and I want to walk you through my thought process. It is possible that because these are blanks and not nulls that it's not working. I And I will say that is something I typically do where I set these blanks to nulls first. So let's actually try that and see if that changes anything. I'm just going to update uh, this. I'm going to say set the industry equal to null. And we'll say where industry is equal to blanks. So we're just changing it to null where it's blank. Let's try this. And let's go back down here to our select statement. So these are all nulls. Okay, I think I think this is now going to work. Because now you can see on this side, it's going it to, there's only one option for it to populate it. Before there were those um, blanks, which I think was causing the issue. Um, let's get rid of this part because now we have no nulls. And now let's try running this. We're workshopping this on the fly, guys. Uh, let's see. Three rows affected. Hey, oh, all right. Let's go see if it worked. Um, let's run this query. And we have none. That's perfect. Let's look at Airbnb. <laughs> hey, all right, all right. Ran into some issues, but we worked through it. We figured out the issue, and now it's working properly. And we can even come back up here to select everything. And it looks like Bailey's is the only one that still has a null. Let's look up Bailey's real quick. And we'll say where company is like uh, Bailey. Let's run this. Yeah, and there's only one. So there wasn't another row. All these other ones like Carvana and um, I can't remember what the other, uh, Jewel and Airbnb. Those ones had an extra row. They did multiple layoffs. This one only did one layoff. So we don't have another populated row where it's not null to actually populate the null row. That's really all that happened. Uh, that's why that worked that way. So I'm really happy that worked. Awesome job, guys. Uh, I was starting to question myself. Do I even know how to use MySQL. I mean, I was really starting to question my abilities here. Um, let's take a look. Uh, I think that is all we're gonna do for populating null values. Now, here's why. Things like total laid off, percentage laid off, um, funds raised, how are we gonna populate that with the data that we have here? I don't believe we can. Now, we might be able to populate, oops, we might be able to populate some of this if we had the um, company total, like if we had the original total before laid off, because then we could do calculations like, um, oh, these companies went completely out of business. That's not good. 
and 1%, that means 100% was laid off. Um, <clears throat> but if we had, you know, the total, they had 50 employees and 100% were laid off, we could populate the total laid off. Whoops, did it again. We could populate the total laid off by saying, if this is 50, 100% was laid off, that's 50 people were laid off. We don't have that data, so we can't go and populate it, I don't believe. Funds raised, we might be able to scrape some data from the web and populate this, but that's a totally different thing, um, not part of this project. So I think the data cleaning for the null values and blank values, I think that's going to be done. Um, it's possible that the stage could be the same, and if you want to go check, you can, but we're going to keep chugging along because we want to remove columns and rows that we need to. Now, if you remember, we were looking at this before. Did I save that uh, query? Let's go look. Here we go. I'll bring this down to the bottom. All right. These rows, let's, let's really take a look at these um, and think about if this is going to be helped us. Um, what we are trying to do with this data in the near future is we're not just trying to identify a company or a location that had layoffs, and maybe we are. Maybe, the, maybe we are trying to do that, but these have no layoffs and no percentage laid off. So in my opinion, I don't know if these laid off any at all. Um, I believe that we can get rid of these. Now, deleting data is a very interesting thing to do. You have to be confident. Am I 100% confident? No, not really. But I'm confident enough to know that what we're about to look at in the next one, we're going to be using these total laid off a lot. Percentage laid off a lot when we're looking at, um, you know, actually querying the data and doing some exploratory data analysis. So we're going to use these a lot. I don't think uh, these, I'm not even sure if these are accurate. I'm not even sure if they actually did have a layoff. It's saying they did, but it doesn't show if they laid off any. So um, can we delete this? Yes. Should we delete this? It's iffy. Uh, I'm not 100% if I'm being completely honest. And there's a lot of rows like that. This is, this could be like you know, 100 or so. I'm really not, I mean, I could run a query and run it, but I don't want to, I don't, it's not a big deal. The point being, I don't think we need this information, so we're going to get rid of it. If nothing else, just to show that you can do it. So now we'll say uh, delete, and then we'll do from here. There we go. So now we're going to delete these rows. Let's try to select them again, and they are gone. So we deleted the ones where the total laid off was blank and the percentage laid off was blank. We just, I can't trust that data. I really can't. Um, and let's go back down. I'm right here. I have a semicolon. So I sometimes I have to walk myself through these things. Um, all right. This row num. I mean, come on. We don't need that anymore. Let's get rid of it. Um, so what we can do now, it's a little bit different syntax. We want to drop a column from this table. So we have to do the alter table again. We're going to alter table layoff staging two, and then we're going to say drop column and row underscore num. If we run this, then we run the table again, should be gone, and it is. So this is it. This is our finalized clean data. Now in the next project, we're going to be doing exploratory data analysis on this cleaned data. We're going to finding trends and patterns and running complex queries. It's going to be phenomenal. I'm super excited about it. And I love this data cleaning one. Um, I made some mistakes. I'll be the first one to admit. But cleaning data is not always a straightforward thing. Um, you know, you have to you know, kind of mess around with it, figure it out. Uh, and, and, you know, that's what we did. Uh, whoa, took a while. So. Just to recap, we removed duplicates, we standardized the data, we looked at the null values or blank values, and then we removed any columns or rows. So we did a lot. Um, if you go back and you actually scroll through here and look at some of this code that we wrote, uh, it's not super beginner stuff. So if you're following along with these things and you are getting this project, this is a fantastic project to put on your portfolio. I myself would put this project on my portfolio because it's a very, very relevant thing. So I hope this was helpful. I'm just going to keep scrolling while I talk. But I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something. We did, a, we did a lot of different things that we didn't even do in the lessons, which I like doing because you can't cover every single aspect of MySQL in lessons, right? Sometimes you just got to get in there, get into the nitty gritty, clean some data, and you'll find uh, or discover new things, try new things. Um, 
And now we're getting to the bottom and awesome work. Awesome, awesome, awesome work. Uh, this is an A1 project. I think this should be in everyone's uh, portfolio. If I don't see it in your portfolio and you know you send it to me, uh, I'm gonna say it's the garbage portfolio. So this is a good one. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I If you made it all the way to the end, you're still listening to me, awesome work. Really awesome work, for real. It, it, I You know, you're just following along with the tutorial. That's what it feels like. But by the end of this, I, I just know you're learning a ton and you're you're trying new things and you're really pushing yourself beyond just simple tutorials. So trust me when I say this is not easy. Not everyone was able to make it to the end. So great work getting here. So I will uh, see you guys in the next project when we actually explore this data, we'll walk through a lot of different ways to do that. So thank you again for watching. If you like this, be sure to like and subscribe below. I put out tons of content about all this stuff and I absolutely love it. It is definitely one of my passions in life. So go ahead and do that. And I will see you in the next video.